Mr. President, uh, special thanks to your delegation for convening today's open debate, which has relevance for international peace, stability, and development. Investing in mechanisms to sustain peace is important, especially as we have seen how emerging and systemic threats like the pandemic can exacerbate conflict and undermine peace. In the same context, building and sustaining peace requires addressing the root causes of conflicts and crises, including poverty, exclusion, inequality, and discrimination. Reacting to cycles of violence is unsustainable. Rwanda believes that peace is a long-term investment, and our commitment to peace building is informed by our strong belief in our common humanity and the dignity of all people. In this regard, lasting peace can only be built from within. Rwanda remains committed to sharing our experience in peace building and sustaining peace through bilateral mechanism and with our UN family. Our journey to sustaining peace has shown, has shown us that inclusive and effective national ownership is key to sustaining peace. It is our view that we need to support this while devising future programs for sustaining peace. Talking about building peace and sustaining it means nothing unless accompanied by concrete steps and actions. In this spirit, fulfilling goal 16 of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, building peaceful, just, and inclusive societies is more imperative now than ever before. Mr. President, Rwanda's journey to sustaining peace has focused on a people-centered approach, ownership, inclusiveness, and accountability. Strengthening institutions has become a core value in our system. This approach has influenced us in designing bottom-up homegrown solutions, such as imihigo or performance contracts between local leaders and their constituencies. These homegrown solutions are customized to the aspirations of the citizens, ensuring that no one is left behind in contributing to overall development. Mr. President, governments have a responsibility to protect their citizens. And therefore, when we discuss social economic development, human rights and humanitarian issues, governments should be core actors to ensure their people lead a dignified life. When governments exhibit a political will and honor their duties and commitments, peace building and investing in peace becomes both achievable and sustainable. Mr. President, sustaining peace in the Great Lakes region is a desire of all regional countries, including Rwanda. It is in this regard that Rwanda reiterates deep concern about the evolving security situation in North and South Chivu in the DRC, which remains a serious threat to the hard and peace and security in the region. The endemic cycle of violence, atrocities, and acts of genocide in Eastern DRC specifically against Kinyarwanda-speaking Congolese, results from structural failures with the absence of state authority to guarantee safety and security for its people and its spillover effects to neighboring countries. Persecution, discrimination, insecurity, consistent threats, and violence against a section of Congolese citizens have forced close to 80,000 Congolese to seek refuge in Rwanda and many, other, and many others in neighboring countries including Burundi, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. Resolving the refugee issue and preventing future internal displacement crises are, ex are inextricably, uh, inextricably, uh, sorry, are inextricably linked to achieving long-lasting peace in the region. In order to resolve the refugee crisis and achieve sustainable peace, root causes must be addressed without delay. Disregarding the root causes of the refugee crisis further exacerbates instability, which threatens peace building and peacekeeping efforts. Indeed, to achieve sustainable peace, the plight of these Congolese facing perpetual internal displacement and indefinite exile without a viable prospect to return home must be categorically and structurally addressed. Mr. President, DRC is home to over 130 armed groups, including FDR a UN-sanctioned armed group that committed genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, and which possesses a strong authority in the Eastern DRC. 
As a consequence, FDRR and its sprinter groups continue to pose a, a serious threat, not only to the Congolese people, but Rwanda's peace sustainability. Rwanda cannot sustain its hard-earned peace with this looming threat at the doorstep in the DRC. In this regard, the UN Security Council must genuinely assist the region in bringing about lasting peace in the DRC by tackling the root causes and the drivers of conflicts. The UN Security Council should stop highlighting the symptoms of insecurity in DRC while evading the root causes. Double standards and scapegoating only embroidering those who should be responsible for peace building. Mr. President, conclude, Rwanda believes that a holistic and coordinated approach to promoting peace is grounded in effective national ownership, cooperation, and partnerships. Inclusive peace building requires the empowerment and active involvement of actors across all segments of society, including at the grassroots level. Rwanda also believes that peace building, that peace, uh, building peace is more than just ending conflict. It is about building trust and harmony and strengthening the social contract between the state and its people. Yet, sustainable peace cannot be obtained only at the national level, but also through regional and international efforts. I thank you for your kind attention.